I'm forcing myself to work and angrily setting up because I'm feeling a lot of resistance, but it's my studio season. I promised myself I would do some work. So I thought I would do some cold wax because, oh, you know what? I need to move this up. This is a little too low. Hold on. There we go. Yes, so cold wax. I made a video a long time ago about cold wax when I didn't know what I was doing. And since then I have done a lot more cold wax. So I thought a good way to get over my resistance was to do some cold wax. <clears throat> so these are some panels from last year. I don't know why this one wasn't already taped, but I'm gonna tape it up really quick. And I'm going to just do some basic cold wax techniques, kind of revisit the basics and remind myself how it all works. So these are just some panels from last year, like I said, they're completely dry now. And you wanna, of course, make sure that you wear gloves. I have the window open right here for some ventilation. And the basic tools are these, what are these called? <laughs> Spreaders. They have a special name. And these are from the Cold Wax Academy website. Well worth it. You should get these. You should get all of the cold wax stuff that they have there because it's really good. Um, and then I have just cool mark making tools. These are from, oh, I can't remember the name of the website. I'll post it, but these are handmade brushes, kind of a luxury item. And then these, I can't believe this is dirty, but it is. <laughs> I must have some better stuff somewhere. I use Gamblin cold wax. I've also made my own cold wax, but I'm just gonna use the, the pre-made stuff since I have it. Oh, here they are. I was so organized, I didn't know where anything was. So a variety of palette knives. I think, I think this one is my favorite, so I think I'll use this one. Oh, it, it could use some cleaning. And then brayers from Cold Wax Academy, well worth the investment. Though I will say I am not fond of this one. It doesn't, it's, I don't know. It just doesn't, it doesn't roll very well. We'll, we'll give it a try though. And then I have big brayers that I don't need. I think I tend to use this as my small one and this is just a speed ball. So I am on a, an Ikea glass panel, but you can also use freezer paper. And I think I will do that today just to make things easy on myself. Someone who is good at making videos would have this all set up already. If you want well-made videos, <laughs> this is not the channel for you. What else? I think that's everything. So now colors. Um, so these already have the initial layers, but one of the recommendations from Cold Wax Academy is, and from their book is to build up some foundational layers, which I kind of already have here. And when you build up those foundational layers, you want to kind of layer contrasting layers in terms of color and value. And so these are already dry. When I put the cold wax on here, it's gonna kinda rehydrate it, so to speak. And this is in the color palette that I am trying to stick with. I am trying to do uh, work in a limited with some limitations, sorry. So I have already pre-selected the colors I am allowed to use. So I'm just gonna grab some of those. I think I'll do turquoise and transparent orange. 
So the turquoise, I think it's good to kind of play around with opaque and transparent colors. So this is opaque. This one is transparent. I'll use some titanium buff. And let's see. I think I, I, I kind of want like a transparent blue as well. So I'm going to use this phthalo blue. All right. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and just for fun, well, hmm, I don't think the transparent orange is going to look very good over this, but it'll be very satisfying. So usually for my first layer, when I'm building those foundational layers, usually, ooh, so pretty. I love this color. I feel like I started a sentence that I didn't finish. So I'm just going to take a bunch of this out so I can close this back up. And then I'll put this away. Okay. 50 50 mix and I just kind of eyeball it that looks about right and mix it up if you are concerned about drying time you can add a drop of gal kid I'm not that worried about it so I'm not gonna bother and then let's go ahead and get our roller rolled up so when you're rolling it on there, it's, you, want, you can go back and forth. You can also pick it up and put it down. I'm holding it pretty loosely. And then you can just roll it on there. I'm not pressing that hard. These are kind of semi-foundational layers. At least, you know, you're getting into texture right away and you'll need to decide how, how texture you want it because you're, whatever, like, the thicker the texture, the more you're gonna have to deal with it later on. I know I'm not gonna like that color on there, so I'm just gonna make this a little more interesting. Make it a little bit opaque. Okay, so see like that, I don't want that much texture. So I'm just gonna roll it here. Now, I like this color and I wanna, I wanna put some on here, but because there's already some on there, if I try to roll it on, um, well, let's see what happens. Well, in this case, it's not that bad, but it's less opaque. But usually you only roll the first layer because the second layers will just get rolled off. So I'm going to use, why can't I think of the name of this right now? Whatever this tool is called, because I really, not, not too happy with those colors there. And you can see it's a, a totally different texture, very smooth. And the way I'm holding it, I'm holding it lightly 
and I'm just, just dragging it across. You can also, if you want like more curving, instead of doing it here, you can do it this way and it's a little bit softer. I don't really care for that texture, so I'm just gonna wipe that out a little bit. And then we can do some lines in there if we want. Uh, you can let it set up a little bit more too if you don't like, ugh, if you don't like that sort of thing. some of these look like. This is probably going to remove some of it. So because I already had some layers on there, I can scrape back and reveal what was already underneath. So I like this one a lot. It's kind of a soft, kind of brushy texture. And then there's this one that's is this kind of texture, some scrofito in there. Okay, I went a little overboard. <laughs> That's okay, I'll leave that one. Care for that. Okay. I feel like I want some turquoise. So, Squeeze some out. I don't think I need as much. I'm gonna allow this little bit of orange in here because it's good to have a little bit of each color in all of the color. Well, not every color, but you know, you wanna to help synth synthesize them so that it's not just like the color straight from the tube. You want to, you know, have them be a little bit related to each other. And if they have a little bit of each other, then they're, they're, they start to harmonize a little bit better. All right. And then, so for this one, let's see, actually, I will, let's try this. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe I meant to. Let me just put more of the same color on there. Oh, it's a little bit brighter. So I can go over this layer if I drag lightly. All right, let's see. I want, I want a little bit of this in here, I think. Put some phthalo in there. That's probably a little too much cold wax, but it'll be okay. All right, put just a little bit of that. I don't really like how this looks. It's too, I don't know, too vivid. I add in a little bit more of the orange to make it less tuby. All right, let's see how that goes. See how that's really dark. I don't like how dark that is. So what do we do if it's really dark and we don't want it to be that dark, but we still want it to be opaque? I don't know. But I know that that's way, way darker than I want. So I'm gonna lighten it up.
Well, these are kind of kind of reestablishing some foundational layers here, so I'm not too worried about whether I like this or not. I'm just kind of playing with the color, loosening up. pretty high contrast. And one of the things that I personally feel like I need to fight against about cold wax is that things get kind of geometric and I am definitely more of an organic person. Um, and But I always use like the thing that gives the most geometric shape. So I have to sometimes kind of remember like don't really want that, so let's change it. Let's force myself out of that. So I think there's not really anything under here right now. All right, so those are those tools. The other thing you can do is use tissue paper to compress the layers. So and normally you would probably use it over a larger area. So then, then it really, I think this is when it starts to get interesting. It's when you use, this is like my favorite thing to do because it removes some of it and then you start to get those more organic textures and layers. So now, now I'm like, ooh, now I'm interested. This is, this is far more interesting to me. Let's see if we can liven up this other one. This one's getting kind of saturated. Try a fresh one. So can just make a mess because if I don't like this I can always just um, put another layer over it so I'm gonna stop there because if I do too much more it's gonna it's just gonna turn brown this graffito is my favorite thing so I this, mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> There's a lot of other techniques that you can use with cold wax. Things like solvent pours and that's one I haven't yet mastered, solvent pours, but I would like to because you get really gorgeous results. So this is just, there's nothing fun going on here. So this one will definitely need another layer. But I do kind of like the, it kind of has some, something interesting going on. I don't like this. So maybe I will do something about that.
I didn't really talk that much about how to use the palette knife because I'm not using proper technique. So I will, I will do it another time. So I think I'll let these set up. I'm trying to think if I have any other, I have this painting that I totally screwed up. I mounted it on here and I wanted to integrate it and um, it just didn't go very well. So maybe I'll do this and see if I can bring some of that back. Now I need more. Now I need more. Okay, I'll just leave it alone. So I have some stuff left over, that's okay. I can uh, scoop it off into a thing and save it for tomorrow. I have a lid for that. And then now um, I've made a big mess, so Let's go over clean up. So put my paints away first. Roll off as much as I can. Sorry, I keep bumping the camera. Oh, I had all that. <laughs> I must be able to use that somewhere. I just went and wiped it on, <laughs> on that painting from before. All right. Mm -hmm. I love these brushes, but they are a pain to clean. I'm not even sure I do it right. I didn't use that one. The universally despised gambling ca caps. Has some goo in it. I'm gonna. Ugh. <laughs> okay. Have our tools kind of wiped. And um, you have some options for cleanup. up. Now, I just threw my papers, my oil soaked papers, just in a regular trash can. I'm going to take that trash can out because I, the fumes will kind of bother me. So keep that in mind. Now, let's see, how do I clean up? My preferred method is to use baby wipes, but I don't seem to have any right now. I don't see any, but I do have baby oil and I have a rag. And the baby oil works great and it's non-toxic. Um, the only problem is it 
So I, I don't care for the fragrance. I'm kind of sensitive to fragrances though. So just wiping this off, getting the worst of it off. Oops. So as you can see, I'm spending almost as much time cleaning up as I do on the actual working. So I normally would do more than just a couple of things to get the, the most out of it. But you get better at cleanup and you get better at not making such a big mess. At least other people do. Um, and that helps, it helps to kind of clean as you go. I just don't because I, that's just not my way. I'm just, I'm just messy. I am just messy. I think it's probably a good idea not to leave a lot of baby oil on your tools because there's drying waxes or uh, drying, drying oils and non-drying oils and baby oil is non-drying and you know just in an abundance of caution you want to avoid getting too much non-drying oil in your painting because we want it all to dry So I'm, I'm using rags that I reuse because I want to try to, you know, be a little bit environmentally conscious. <clears throat> but you do you. All right, so all of my tools are cleaned and wiped off and ready for the next session. Throw this away. Now everything is ready for tomorrow, where I will be able to add another layer to the layer I just did, and I'll probably start some more. So thank you for watching my Get Over My Own uh, Resistance. I hope that this was helpful, and I'll see you next time.